Hello students, in this video we'll discuss how to compute rates of interest and future values and present values given an initial amount of money. So if we're given an initial amount P, the value after one year depends on the rate of interest. There are three particular types of interest which we'll focus on. The first type of interest is simple interest. And with simple interest, our value at time T is our initial value P times 1 plus i t. So I have a linear growth of the value. I have compound interest. The compound interest formula is that v of t is equal to p 1 plus i to the power t. And now we see the first order approximation of compound interest is simple interest by the binomial formula. And finally, we have continuous interest. And continuous interest is given by the formula V of t is p e to the i t, where i is the rate of interest. Now we will see how to use these formulas to discount money. So suppose, so we should make one other note. So note that 1 plus i to the t power by the binomial formula is 1 plus i t plus higher order terms. So we can say that this is approximately equal to 1 plus i t if i t is a small value. Now we can ask the following question. So question, given a stream of payments of, for the context of this problem, let's just say $1. So I'm given a stream of payments of $1 at a rate i for n years. What is the present value of the stream. So let's think about what this question is asking. What it's telling us is it's saying that there is a stream of payments. So right now we're at time zero, then we have at time one, at time two, at time three, at time four, all the way up to time n. At each of these moments of time, we are given one dollar. Now, $1 a year from now, $1 two years from now, $1 three years from now, are not worth what they'll be worth at time zero. They're sort of discounted. So what we can think of is this. We can say that if we wish to have $1 one year from now, we invest P, and P times 1 plus I, the compound interest rate, would have to be $1. Or P would have to be 1 over 1 plus I. And similarly, similarly, P times 1 plus I to the K would be equal to 1, would tell me how much I would need to invest it right now that in k years I'd have 1, and this would tell me that p is equal to 1 over 1 plus i to the k. And so what we'll do is we'll introduce a notation. We'll let nu be 1 over 1 plus i. And we see the answer to our problem is the following. We will see that in order to make $1 in one year, I will have to invest 1 over 1 plus i. That's the formula we got over here. In two years, I'll have to do 1 over 1 plus i squared. And at time n, I'll need 1 over 1 plus i to the power n, which we can write in terms of nu as nu plus nu to the power n, which is a geometric sum. I can write this as nu times 1 plus nu to the n minus 1. The geometric sum formula will tell me that this is nu 
times the quantity 1 minus nu to the n over 1 minus nu. And what we can do is we can simplify this. So now we can observe that nu over 1 minus nu is 1 over 1 plus i over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus i. And we can multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus i. And we see that this will simplify to 1 over 1 plus i minus 1, or just 1 over i. So we see that the answer to our question is that we must invest the present value will be 1 minus nu to the n over i. And there's a notation for this. This is written as a bracket and i, and that's called the present value of an annuity do. Whenever we do computations like this, we'll always try to exploit geometric sum formulas, so it's important to review that formula because we'll be using it over and over again. Thank you very much.